geniuses turn to pick. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Dota Pit here. It is Thursday, October 30th, and we are going to be having some Group B action for you. More Round Robin Dota coming underway. We got two two game series, I like to say. I don't like to say the whole best of two thing. But we're going to lead things off here with a battle against Evil Geniuses taking on the Power Rangers. And uh, bringing you the action, the English coverage is going to be myself, Coddle Guy, but I'm not going Ten at it alone. Remaining. I got a good friend here. Joining me remotely, hopefully it comes Five in loud and clear, remaining. it's going to be Trouf. My friend, are you there? Can you hear me, please? Can you hear me? I can hear you. It Reserve sounds beautiful. Time. Oh, good, good, good. I'm going to get you turned up a little bit here. I think we're all Gucci, though, as far as that goes. Fantastic, sir. Well, thanks for joining me, man. This is our first time casting yeah. together. I'm excited. I am, too. I don't believe I'll be able to make the next one after this, mm -hmm. but uh, this one's exciting in itself, so yeah, good to be casting with the Kyle guy. Yeah, man, that's what it's all about. I'm excited, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it here on paper, of course, according to First Dota 2 Lounge, sure. Evil Geniuses, no surprise, Radiant are, uh, team pick. well, the heavy favorites. They got about an 86% advantage over their uh, Power Rangers Jeez. brothers, but uh, I got to tell you, man, I've been seeing a lot of Power Rangers lately, and with this new kid here, Ditya Ra, man, he can take games from behind the backs of enemy teams. He's done like four straight in the Summit 2. They just qualified for the playoffs. Their standing here in Dota Pit ain't that great. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I bring it up right here for us to look at. Ten yeah, right now we have Evil Geniuses supporting a nice and sexy 5-1 and one record. And uh, Power seconds. Rangers, they're, well, they're the opposite. They're 1-5. They're but, you know, with a couple of wins here, it certainly couldn't Reserve hurt to time. hope for a chance at tiebreakers, I suppose. Why not, right? Sure, yeah. Um, that kind of sucks, though. That kind of brings down your motivation a little bit, just as a mental block. But I, I didn't know the actual players that were standing Radiant out, but I did, I did see some of their previous games, and I know that they've had some pretty decent upsets as of late. So so it's Ditya? Ditya is the, what kind of, what does he play? Ditya, he plays the one, man. And he likes okay. those elusive kind of characters, snowball heroes. He loves Slark. Slark. He likes Ten playing uh, Clinks every once in a while. The kid's good. I hope I don't jinx him right now, but uh, he hasn't let me down yet. Every time he impresses, I'm just like, look out for this guy, and bam, he hits it home again. But Evil Geniuses, of course, we know the prestige boys in blue, if you will, just coming off a nice, pretty uh, pretty big win at Star Ladder after taking down Team Secret. Got to be Evil confident geniuses. as all ever, but, Turn you know, who knows? Bang. They could be underestimating the Power Rangers squad. They could pull out some sort of corny pocket strat. I don't know, man. I would have still put a value bet on Power Rangers for this one, but we'll have to see how it goes. Um, without further ado, though, if you don't mind, I guess we could talk about the draft at hand here. Evil Geniuses, they take Ten advantage of the first remaining. couple of picks. They get Razor and Earthshaker for their long-range stunning support. And on Power Radiant Rangers, Tidehunter, the Watermelon Man, and, of course, Mr. Ogre McGee, the Magi himself. And Tidehunter has been... Always good, of course, but like I feel like he's like back in the spotlight once more, ex especially after Star Ladder seeing what Universe can do with Ten him, what we've seen Phonic remaining. be able to do with him. Just a fantastic hero. Can I get five seconds yeah, and, remaining? Yeah, and Fly performed pretty well on him too, yeah. if I remember correctly. I think uh, Reserve time. it's one of those heroes to, to me, like Batrider, that people always know in the back of their mind that's really, really good. And they just kind of forget, or they want to try out new things as a new patch comes, and then yeah. it kind of comes back. It's like, oh, wait a second, we can just this hero is just perfect in team fights, or this hero never loses relevance as we get in the late game. So, I think Tidehunter is one of those heroes. It never really Evil loses relevance. Geniuses, like, it's because the damage isn't really the important part of the ultimates. It's the um, it's just the stun effect, and the stun will always be effective from start to finish. So, yeah, I think that's why he's been popular and he's a really good laner like he can yeah. do ancients he can lane well 1v1 one, one. So, one of the better uh, matchups actually 1v1 for him against uh, especially other melees i think you have to draft um some sort of ranged carry if you want to really shut him down yeah so that if if your supports want to leave the lane it's not like oh crap we're leaving a melee against the tide it's like if you had like a viper or um, i know that eg likes to draft lena a lot lena would be fine just some kind of ranged hero works best yeah, I feel like it's either you got to make sure you put together a decent lineup to try to zone them back as much as possible, or remaining. you're just kind of committing to being stuck in that lane, because if Tidehunter, heaven forbid, mm -hmm. gets stuck an opportunity against two straggling kind of heroes, I mean, I saw it in the 
what was it, the Navi Team Tinker game when they had to bring in two stand-ins. Those two stand-ins were stuck in a lane against Funnick on a Tidehunter, and he just took control and instantly had highest uh, CS, highest net worth in the game. Just goes to show, man, Tidehunter is a beast in that lane, and you need a lot to just kind of get him out of the lane from at least grabbing a little bit of XP because eventually, whether it be falling back on something like the jungle or, you know, ancient stacks, he's going to find a way to get a hold of a Blink Dagger, and that's when the game's going to change. So Power Rangers have a couple of beefcakes right here. They're pretty big. They're pretty fat. Not too beautiful, but uh, on the side of Evil Geniuses, we're going to get a Nature's Prophet here, and if it was just any other team, Ten I'd say, oh, okay, remaining. looking like offlane, but it's EG, and you never can know, man. This could be a position for Nature's Five Prophet in the hands of Zai. Hell, it could be mid lane with Arteezy. You know, this, this team has proven and shown and Reserve talked about time. in numerous interviews how they look forward to being a lot more flexible with their with their lineup, with their roster, and who they like to play in what position. So you really know what to expect, except more than likely an Arteezy Razor here. So Nature's Prophet? Either offlane with Universe or possible position four. We'll have to wait and see, man. If it is Zai playing the Prophet, I think they definitely need a ranged hero for their carry, like, no question. Because Earthshaker can't do any. Like, Earthshaker is actually pretty shitty against Tide. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do much to zoning him out. He's a melee hero. He has to walk up and harass him, and that just that won't work against the Anchor Smash. So they, they definitely need a ranged hero if they wanted Prophet as a, uh, as a four. So that leads me to believe it's probably going to be Universe, but we'll see. And then a Wisp. Io, Eo, Ao. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Can we, I just like to say Ayo. wisp, you know. Come on, it's a ball sure. or ball boy. I mean, I don't know, but ball boy. There you go. The ball boy. Okay, so I was gonna talk about Ten before, you know, it, you know, wisp still the hot commodity, especially if you got a prominent pro Five wisp player on your team. Remaining. I thought I was going to see it ignored this game, having not being uh, picked up or banned through the first phase, but it's gonna make appearance time. here. So this kind of puts things in more perspective right now for the Power Rangers as far as what they want to do and uh, what the game plan might be here. But, uh, I mean, I haven't known them to run a tiny Wisp kind of combo, so I'm Radiant just going to assume pick. this is possibly PA that could be possibly set up here. I mean, you already have the, uh, what is it, the, the, the Bloodthirst, or the Bloodlust, rather, so you already have attack speed mm -hmm. with that one. Uh, ideally, a lineup they pull together something like a Magnus, so you have the power of Empower, but... I don't know. With Wisp and Overload alone, she could do a lot. So it's possible we could see a mid lane PA matchup with uh, Wisp here. Yeah, it could be PA. It could also Ten be Gyro. Yes, yes. Be decent. I've seen them picked up a lot lately. It's pretty good Five against like remaining. Prophet and even Earthshaker. Because if I mean, actually, if it's PPD playing Earthshaker, he won't get a blink for like 40 He's minutes anyway. Time. So uh, that hard life but... in position nine, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Batrider banned out here from PR. That's interesting to me. Because Crystal Maiden's picked and Earthshaker's there. Yeah. I don't think that BG was def ever going to go for a Batrider. Yeah. Kind of weird. Maybe they still, for some reason, feel like this could be an Arteezy Nature's Prophet, and they have Fear pick up the Razor. I mean, it seems a bit far-fetched to me, but I maybe. Mean, you know, maybe yeah. they're just intensely theorycrafting. You know, this is one of the few occasions we get to see uh, an East, like, a, or, you know, a U.S. kind of, a, you know, U U.K. kind of a team. And it's nice to have an idea as far as where these teams are going to really match up. After seeing how much Power Rangers can Ten do against the rest remaining. of the uh, Russia slash Ukrainian squad, to see him play here against EG will really put in perspective remaining. where they fall. And it is going to be a clink scrap here. That's a that's a Ditya hero, without a doubt. And he's already shown before well, how much he can get done bad. with it. He loves to go all in. Like in games where we're sitting there, like you got to get a BKB for this game. You're crazy. You're out of your mind. He'll still keep <laughs> building up damage. He'll still run around. He'll he'll wreak havoc, and he'll find opportunities to open up on towers. And that seems to be their plan B. When their plan A doesn't remaining. work, which is probably going to be their fifth pick, fifth pick here that kind of synergizes with Wisp a little Five bit more, whether it be PA, remaining. let's say. Uh, they can always fall back on Clinks getting that in power and just kind of doing severe backdoor Reserve damage. Yeah, I'd actually like to see EG put more farm emphasis on uh, Earthshaker this game. I think they don't really have too many answers to Clinks, uh, especially if he gets a BKB. In fact, they really have no Ten answers. And Clinks is really remaining. good against Razor because you can't really get a effective link off on him mm -hmm. and none of clink's remaining. spells or i mean he, he doesn't do any Evil single target like targetable damage so he's not going to ever proc the unstable current yeah from razor and he just does a lot of direct damage to, without targeting him so i think Earthshaker is like one of their better answers this game that or an or early orchids on furion but i even orchids is it's hard to really catch a clink's unless you have a very very good stun setup so it probably won't. It probably will be a, a Peter or Shaker, and probably won't get an early blink. Ten but if he does, I remaining. think that's going to be one of the better ways to deal with this Clinks. Yeah, we'll have to see, man. Five seconds Clinks remaining. could be slippery. 
He can be susceptible to early attention, early ganks. I can prevent him from getting the CS in that early Reserve farm, getting time. hold of something like an Orchid, but uh, you're going to have to start bringing something in that can kind of help a bit with that. It's going to be hard to gank him, even with a global setup from a Nature's Prophet even. So Crystal Maiden also, uh, I, it's going to be a bit finicky there, but I imagine that's now going to be the PPD hero. But once again, man, it, it's EG. You never really know. They pull out something like this. They got the Necrophos. He's, he's ugly, he's green, but pick. he's the, the new... Flavor of the month, man, to be honest with you. We just see him pop up all over the place. Uh, re, you know, with Secret, they pulled out the Wisp Necrophos combo, and he just had so much impact in lane. C9's been incorporating it, doing it as an aggro try, which has been ridiculous. Uh, Havos has picked it up now recently a good couple of times from Navi. Trout, from your perspective, Necrophos, man, what is he now bringing into the limelight that's like all the, all the rage? Remaining. I think it's the ult, man. I think it's the thirty, Five like the thirty second remaining. extra time on your respawn timer. It's really freaking huge. Yeah. Early on, like supports le who are level four that get ulted by an necro that are dead for forty five seconds is actually really huge, and it's you know minute six or minute seven. Legion commander coming out last, and I I I like to see necrophos build into more aggressive stuff. Like I really like like a blink and ags build. I think just building around the ultimate is the is I don't know. It's one of my my favorite ways to build him, but I've seen different things. I know um, what's his name? Envy rushes the the uh, rod of Atos. Yeah, which is a pretty good item on him. Um, don't know if it'll be. Eh, it's not too bad here actually. Wisp can get away from the from it with a tether. Clinks is pretty fast. It's not too bad. I, I'm curious to see what Fear will do, but yeah, I think it's it's just basically the ultimate is what people pick him for. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Even early on, man, the precious CS. Like, if he gets it at, like, he gets a bit of solo remaining. XP, let's say. He gets up to level 6 nice and early when he's nice and ripe. Goes out Five there, slams down remaining. that R hammer so hard. And uh, let's say even on a support who needs that extra time for early on XP, they're going to be out for an additional 30 seconds. That could be devastating early. It could put you on serious tilt, and you can have a slow time recuperating back into the fray. So we'll see, though. Game underway. Got to have a starting off pause, though, of course, because... You know, yeah, these two not? teams, you know, just because it's Dota, we got to have it out there. And, you know, mind you that this two-game series, we are going to lead off our first game on the East server. And that means the next game we're going to be on Luxembourg. So, of course, there's always going to be a little bit of connection problems, a little finicky issues here and there from both teams, making sure they have the right set of ping and they're ready to go. Also worthy to note that the Power Rangers are rolling with a stand-in, believe. We're going to have no, uh, I thought it was no Cheshire Cat, but I could have sworn I saw him in the lobby, but... He's, he's gone right now, and it looks like Mag is going to be standing in. Mr. Centaur, you know, from Star Ladder. He hasn't been on a team since Empire, but he showed a lot of promise there at Star Ladder. Yeah, he played well. I mean, did he really play Centaur the whole time? No, I mean, when, even when I watched him, I didn't see him play Centaur, but everyone's like, oh, Centaur, man, he's Centaur. He must have played Centaur every other game from what I saw. Yeah, so. I, every game I saw, he played Centaur, so I must have missed the only ones he didn't. Oh, well, but it is what it is. It is a good hero, so I don't blame Cloud9. Certainly not. They try to synergize it together, I believe, with the clinks. I would imagine Eternal Envy loves that freaking hero. Ditya is not one to kind of bring in the blinks kind of a build, but we'll have to see here, man, as it is going to get the game underway here. Just the first game of the day. Apologies on starting a little bit tardy, but regardless, we are ready to party. You like how I flipped that one? I know you like to yeah, pass with good, AC good. a lot, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to do that little one for you. <laughs> Anyways, we'll get things underway. I'll go ahead and start off your introductions here on your Radiant side. It's the Power Rangers. They're currently sporting a 1-4 record, but just recently qualified into the Summit 2 playoffs. So they're looking pretty nice here with their recent additions. Cheshire Cat is in the top lane indeed. He's being played, uh, he's playing rather, uh, Legion Commander, who's actually for now just side-by-side -side with Wisp played by Sonico. That leaves mid lane to be Mr. Ditya Ra. One and only the up-and-comer, the new kid, the prodigy, the all-star. He's going to be playing your Clinks. On the bottom, we got Mag, who's actually playing your Tidehunter, and that, of course, is going to leave Mr. Ogre McGee, played by J4. Trouf, if you don't mind, we want to introduce the boys in blue. The boys in blue. Well, in the pink slot here is battle. PPD, playing the Earthshaker. We got Fear handling the Necrophos. Nice. Um, yes, yes, yes. And Zai playing the, what's presumably a jungle crystal maiden. Arteezy on the Razor, no surprise there. And then finally, Universe playing his tried and true <laughs> Nature's Prophet. Nature's prophet in the universe, man. It's like peanut butter and jelly. So he goes That's right exactly what it is. <laughs> with the crust cut off as he heads to the bottom. <laughs> and 
He's going to get those trees out, and they're going to become a true nuisance to prevent these supports from getting any sort of early equilibrium underway. He's going to yes. take advantage of that lane quickly, but you know, being a nature's prophet, he is zoned out a little too heavy. He can always, well, I was going to say he can always fall back on the jungle, but after your introduction, yeah, it's apparent. Zai playing Crystal Maiden, he's going to want a bit of jungle for himself, just getting a side farm here, side farm there. He's got a smoke in his pocket already to blaze up, and I imagine he'll probably look to venture elsewhere, maybe uh, add a little attention specifically on this mid lane clinks. If you watch Universe, he's one of the best. I always watch him at the start of a game no, in his offlane. He blocks probably better than most most players in the entire West. Probably the best blocker. Uh, the only blockers I think do a little bit better than him are some of the Chinese players. They're real. like, I remember, um, oh, who was the guy that played for Vici before he left? The very loud guy, do you remember? What was his name? ROTK? Yeah, he was really good at blocking too. Yeah. And Bone Seven's actually another one. But yeah, Universe, he never fails to block. I always see it close to his tower. It's also dire, so it is a bit easier, but... Just one interesting fact about him. They're and then uh, if he does... Regular oh, uh, Dota Mutumbos, I like to say. That's a sports ball reference, by the way. Basketball. Mutumbos? What, Mutumbo. What's that? He's a pro uh, basketball player. He's like oh, one of the best blockers oh. in the game anyway, so ah. that's where that works out. That's sports ball for you. <laughs> Skin tick. Got it. And then he's, he's screwing with the uh, ogre right here. He's going to mess up his chain pole. Yeah, see? It's like, oh, oh nice creeps you got there. I'm just going to take him back to my tower where I'll find the farm, and you can't do anything about it. Thank you. Thank you very That's much. That's so big, actually. That's really big. Well, he's going to have a nice early start here. Looking at the retrospective, it is indeed Legion Commander and Wisp rolling as a pair on their own right, going against Fears Necrophos, but nearby you have PPD as well on the Earthshaker, one of the best at kind of combo breaking any sort of initiation. So you can also consider him as one of the best babysitters in the game. So he's going to be right there by Fears' side, making sure nothing goes wrong. So Nico on the low ground just trying to soak up what XP he can possible. Uh, he doesn't have a bottle yet. He didn't go immediate rush bottle that you see on some other wisps. We really could take advantage of it, but Zai, man, beats him to the punch. He's like, don't even come to this top rune. You're going to get frozen, and I'm going to smack you down. But he leaves an opening for wisps to take that invis. You can't really tell by the graphic, but he's gone. <laughs> Mid lane, Arteezy, pretty low on life right here, but uh, is going to creep back. And he doesn't know, but wisp, lingering invis nearby. Ditya is also very low there. You might look for a bait here, and they will. They'll go right on RTZ, and they get the first blood. Just as easy as that. It's Ditya gets lasted, too. Uh-oh. Triple kill universe? Oh, can he do it? No, nope, he gets smacked. He might actually go down. He will. Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. That is a universe going into the mid lane, and it going to shit real quick. Oh, no. They lost. That is pretty <laughs> All right, let's wrap bad. it up. Yeah, yeah. Pack it in, boys. Go for game two. No, that's, that's pretty devastating to not only yeah. lose your mid laner in a fashion like that, but then Universe, who already had a very strong start at the beginning, goes for TP and thinking there was going to be an easy cleanup, but it's not. But look at this top lane, though. Trish Arquette quickly purges off that freeze, but can he get away from this? Pull out their juke shoes if you can, my man. Going up the high ground, heals up, uses the wand. Lingering auto attack does catch. He's going to kill himself. Oh, my God, please take me. <laughs> nice. Nice deny right there. Trish Arquette able to get away from that bit of aggression and denies himself. So... There may be one kill here for EG, but they haven't got any sort of blood on their hands whatsoever. It's actually really good. They denied himself, too. It's a free TP back home. Like, he would have liked to do that anyway, so it just yep. worked out nicely. And he had no gold to spend, so it's fabulous stuff yep. coming out. Cheshire Cat returns back to the lane, and they look to be getting aggressive again. Why the hell did you get away from us? They'll zap out a few auto attacks and put Cheshire Cat in his place. So, I mean, what's the objective here at this point? We got Ditya here farming in the mid lane. He went with the early bottle. I imagine he's going to be here for quite a while. He's got to get some levels, and if he wants to start ganking, it might be quite a bit. I mean, do you ma imagine that this Clinks is going to get a lot done outside of, well, scouting out for this room top lane? I think so. It's interesting that he went too for Skeleton Walk and not maxing his Searing Arrows, but he's actually getting kind of owned in this lane. I thought he would do a bit better. He bought the boots early. He's going to put a. That was weird. Yeah, he just came out of Ghost Walk or whatever it's called. They're taking care of Universe at the same time, bottom lane. They just kind of moved on in. He got a self sprout, unfortunately. They just saw him right through the trees. And they took him down with a nice time of the stun. Now, Ditya mid lane's under pressure, and it looks like EG will fight. Fina finally be able to pick up the rear first legitimate kill there. And nice little nuke coming out from Arteezy. They take care of Ditya. Probably the best pickoff they can ask for in the mid lane. If that was really weird. He popped out of his invis to do like two auto attacks on Arteezy. I guess he wasn't expecting it. Still made with dust, but nice rotation from Zai, and he's almost level four after he gets this uh, next jungle creep. TP up top, actually. Yeah, they they tried to go in here on fear, but of course that combo breaking ability, like I said. Ooh, PPD tried to time out the tether and get him 
with the uh, Enchant Totem, but not going to get it right there. So nice counter nice aggression. Nice try. Universe does come to the top lane, unfortunately, so they do commit a little bit for this attempt. That actually didn't happen, so Universe is going to have to wait it out and then finally TP back to the bottom lane. So he's slowly falling behind from where he once started, but he's he's looking to try to get back. In if, the he gets caught in a, uh, if he gets caught in a stun, if Mag is close by, he's dead. Yeah. So he has to be really careful. Yeah, so he's got to step back. Mag now has his Ravage ready to go. He, and he's probably got an itchy trigger finger here, so Dyer's they have an opportunity to open up on Universe, attack. they will. Top lane, they're pushing past the tower now, looking to go on Fear. There's that Fissure. Can they get a kill right here? Nice rotation comes into Martizi, cleans it up with the nuke. Now turns his attention towards yeah, Cheshire yeah. Caddy, who at least wants to get one kill on the way out, but he can't get it. Oh, nice double grab right there for EG. Overzealous play coming out from LC and Wisp. Also, they do manage to get a hold of Universe on that bottom lane as we expected. Ravage actually wasn't even used for that, but they take down Universe. Yeah. Nice grab. That's pretty, that's pretty big that they actually didn't have to use the Ravage too. Mm -hmm. So they, they can kill him again if he comes back. He, he probably just needs to go to jungle now. Because yeah. if he comes down there, even, so if it's, even if the two are showing in lane, if, Someone comes around him, like if Ogre just tries to go around him, he's completely dead. If Clinks comes around him, he's completely dead, which he very well could do. Nice rotation from Arteezy though, top. I don't. Yeah. I think I think in this Radiant's patch especially, it's it's good to see even your cores get very very active early on. I know Arteezy loves to farm, but I don't think that's the way to do it now, unless you're playing a hero that's more farm centric, like Naga or something like that. Yeah. But uh, but even then, just getting active early on is so beneficial. It's good to hear that from a player's perspective because obviously as a caster and uh, as a spectator's perspective, we want to see more action. We want to see more of the team fights, the team mov yeah. the, the movement, you know, the backup being there. And it clearly can pay off. So, I, I mean, sometimes if you're playing, like like I said, Naga or TB yeah. or um, even, even PA, like you, your role is to farm up core items before you even do anything. But on a hero like Razor, you want to be more active. So Yeah. And... Uh, you can almost say the opposite, though. I mean, for Clinks, he's still trying to find his way. Seven, he did get picked off earlier. They now have placed a sentry in this mid lane, so it's not going to be as easy for him to get any sneaky Denied. play to try to get out or try to get crafty moving elsewhere. So top lane, though, Universe, like you said, did opt to go into the jungle, so he's going to find some stable farm there. That, of course, does leave Mag getting a lot out of this bottom lane. I mean, he's blitzing towards that blink dagger, and then I imagine he will adventure out on making a big play happen elsewhere. And that could very well be on this top lane if they don't find the pickoff they want on Fear because Fear's right up there as well. I mean, he's not the highest as far as CF, but a Necrovos, man, he can creep on you. He'll creep on you and he'll bring in some huge, huge items. The next thing you know, you're crumbling before him. Radiance Middle Tower. Yeah, I, I don't think that uh, PR should feel too hasty to do something. I think just sit back, wait until you get your blink on Tide. Maybe rotate Wisp bottom just so you can get six. I think right now they're in the, the me, like the mindset that where they have to force something and do something, but I don't think they necessarily have to right now. I think they're in a fine spot. They're trying to see if anyone was going to jump on the eight-minute room top, but no one's going to bite. Instead, it's going to leave that magic little DD room right there for LC. She'll return back to top lane. She does have her level six. She does have her dual Dyer's ready to go. We'll see if she attack. wants to put to use here. I mean, they're they're potentially looking into it. They have to know she has a DD now, though, so they're going to play a little more cautious, I'd imagine, in this top lane. Yep, Universe still farming in the jungle. He's got treads now. And then Arteezy actually rotated to bottom, so he didn't want to have any more damage on this tower. Oh. So, interesting rotation. Nobody's gone mid yet, so that means Dit Yara is going to get some more free farm. He actually was just, he was just straight up getting owned in mid. Oh, there's a block yeah. actually up the top. Yeah, it was Dyer's interesting to see him actually go mid as well. Normally attack. he plays on the uh, sideline, but they wanted to switch up a bit. That could also be because of Mag being a part of the group for just this game, and they obviously can change around the positions a little bit. Mag's still playing an offlaner. He's just playing it in a safe lane, which is the funny part. So, top lane, though. They get a hold of Wisp here. They freeze it down. So, Nika might fall here. Tether, nope, he's going to fall. It's the uh, global coming out from Universe. Plus, they follow it up. Rethor Scythe, can they take down Cheshire Cat? He does quickly heal up and should be able to run away. Nope, Universe going to be right on it with a TP. Catches with the Sprout. One more right click. The Sprout is blocking their way of getting in. Can he get the long ball Fissure at least? Nope, no mana yet. Oh, he ends up going down. It's the Krofos' goddamn aura. Eventually takes him down now. Look at this. J4 comes in with Wisp back from the grave. Trying to get a hold of Old Man the Necropos here. Come on. These trees, though. God, move trees. <laughs> Wisp can't get by him. J4, and it's going to be Ditya who greets him. Finally, from the end of the hall, and they are able to take down Necropos. But man, oh man, they committed everything there for it and a lot of sweat. My goodness. So the Legion Commander actually died to that to the aura? It looked like it. I mean, she just blew up oh. out of thin air. Yep, he did. Or she did, I should say. That she? sucks. It's a transgender hero.
Cloud really plays for the softball team, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh, still looking boy. to get her first duel. Still looking to try to get a little bit of that bonus damage in. I mean, she's like the next in command as far as real late game damage. So if mm -hmm. Ditya can't get a strong start, they're going to count on her to get something. But bottom Daya's lane, we're seeing that. He's attack. mag. He's creeping around a bit trying to see if anyone's in their area. Not going to catch Radiance anything. But Zai's going to head to bottom attack. right now. Add a additional pressure with Universe side by side towards this bottom. Tier 1 tower, which is getting no defense in the meantime. Mag will finally commit to going down there. He is so damn close to his blink dagger. Just about 100 gold away, he'll be able to have it. We got Ditya, he's farting around up by the enemy jungle. It looks like he's going to beeline it towards the top lane where they could potentially get fear. Uh, expect EG to have their TPs ready, though. He's also got a haste. They need to blow him up. Like, use everything they can. Radiance go, go, go. Up. He's already shown himself. Comes they up from behind. They got to go now. No rotations yet, but Ditya, this is, this is a bit awkward for now. If he steps back, he could have gone for a Reaper Sight there, maybe, and locked him in place, but now he's locked into a duel. Oh, but he gets stunned. Uh, there's the last hit, and he will get the winning bonus damage, but Big Echo Slam flies on through. It is going to be Clink's that ends up going down, plus the Wisp. Can they get the lead from Commander as well? They spot her out right now. Can they stop her? They can't. But they do end up quickly cleaning up two. Actually, three. Ogre was in there. I didn't even really notice, but that's a three-for-one trade on trying to make a go on fear. Not worth it whatsoever. Very, very awkward, but... Radiant's come middle up tower is under attack. Uh, I, I don't know what the clink should have waited. I think a little bit, like he uh, he showed himself in range and then walked away. So it gave it gave the EG time to react. But at the very least, they bought out or they uh, baited out a buyback from Fear. He didn't do anything with it really, and uh, they got dual damage up on Legion. So bottom tower I think that was actually attack. not too bad for PR. Okay, okay, so they're still scathing by, little by little, to try to hold themselves in this one. It's really hard at this time to say who really has a big advantage. Both their cores still lacking a bit on the items. I know Arteezy's probably getting the most out of the game so far, having a pretty dominating performance there in the mid lane, and now he's slowly farming his way up. He's going right for what looks like the BKB, and that will let him do more uncontested damage right in the middle of the fight. So he goes up. Oh, nice little big DD rune here, sir. J4 still flirting with the idea of poking him in the backside because Ditya no nearby. Arteezy probably thinks it's odd, I'd imagine, as well. So he'll kind of take himself back towards the tower. But all's calm, man. I'm still waiting for Mag to get in on the action. He now does have his Blink Dagger. Where are my Blink Ravages at? I want them. Maybe top. Yeah, right Yeah, now. here it goes. Relocate right into the mix. Jumps on in. Goes for Fear. Ult comes out. Can't get the kill there on Ogre very nicely, but he falls himself. Duel breaks out here. Not going to be holding him long enough for the victory, but there's your Ravage, and it gets on PPD. They will be able to take him down. They actually take Mag back and leave uh, Cheshire Cat all by the Lonesome, and uh, yeah, she'll end up falling. Don't know if that was just accidentally bringing Mag back or if they knew it was going to go bad real quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if they could have stayed, or at least left the, yeah, like you said, Dyer's left Mag and maybe, maybe fought attack. that, but taking the safer out, I Dyer's suppose. That puts so one did he get dual now. damage? He didn't get dual damage, though. That's kind of sucks. Yeah, he, he started that duel very early. It could have been just to make sure PP doesn't leave and that they have enough time to finish off the kill on Dyer's fear and then go towards PPD. So uh, with, if that was the case, I guess mission fortified. successful. They took down both of them, but they do end up losing to themselves, including their very own offlaner. Maybe a slight advantage for, you know, Power Rangers taking down Old Man Fear. Dude, uh, Legion Commander and Necrophos are now two, like, ultimate pub heroes because if there's ever a reason to KS it's with these heroes now and will, they will always give you an excuse to KS just so you can get the damage or you can get the yep. extra respawn timer it's perfect it's foolproof sounds good to me man it's like all back in the day when everyone liked to play Zeus just to get kills and KS like crazy but now your KS works to the benefit of not just yourself but your whole team taking someone out that yep. long but here we go pushing on through Wiz tethered up here. Cheshire Cat on LC is going to sidestep the Fissure, but it is going to be a successful block. Nonetheless, that allows, though, PR to get a nice little deny there on the Tier 1 top. But look who's cutting him off at the passes. Did yet bringing in big damage in the small relocate. Brings him into an Echo Slam that PPD turns back and blows up the ball with. Now they do take down Arteezy. Cheshire Kid gets slammed at home. Eat another 30 seconds, my friends. 70 seconds, death timer for the Legion Commander. Top lane's eye is going to pop off a of dust, but they cannot see Did yet as he's already pulled on out. That was a huge play by, by Peter. Yeah, man. A huge damage coming out. So, yeah, kind of, kind of interesting that they just walked in the Earthshaker and then just was able to do that. But, you know, they really need a blink on this LC, like, really, really Radiant's badly. top tower is under attack. All right, well, they'll move as a group back from what they brought in there. A big turnaround they're definitely making work for, but here's Ditya. Yeah, he's creeping. Sees old man Fear. 
but he's still near some allies as he will continue to scout on through. This is when he's starting to go high mobile here. He only has his Midas for now, but he starts to really shine when he brings in the damage. I'm, I'm curious how greedy he's going to go for. Right now he's going to go for PPD here. Is PPD going to get off the Fissure? He will, but the damage has already been done. So Diggy gets a quick hit and run, hopefully. Uh, he does have the Skeleton Walk now and enough mana. There's a regen bottom too if he wants to go there and check it out. It would really help him. Oh my goodness, look uh, at that, that thing. Sucks. He's but walking, he's me and Nope, he's just going to go like, I'm going to go Midas. i got to use it real quick. <laughs> So he gets to hear tomato free gold for him, and Dyer's he opts to step back. So, very nice hit and run, though. Job to take down that PPD Earthshaker in the mid lane. Gives yeah. him a little bit extra benefit. And uh, it looks like everyone's going back to their old separation of farms. So as the game progresses, I guess, from here on out, do you think there'll be a point where uh, PR's Ditya on Clinks will be able to bring up enough damage to give uh, EG a lot of problems? Or do you think with Arteezy's early advantage and Fear bringing in a reasonable amount of farm, are they going to still be kind of the you know, the ones to kind of put the game in PR's favor. Well, I, I think Clinks does a buttload of damage now, and, uh, like, ever since they buffed just a little bit of the damage on the Searing Arrows, and people forget just how much damage he can do with such little items. And the, the X Factor here is what you talked about at the beginning, is that they have perfect uh, team fight setup with Tide. Like, so he's, yeah. he's going to stun, you know, multiple targets, three or four, in any given team fight very, very easily. And I think that's the key factor, is that he has that amazing team fight set up with the Tide, so... I, I, I actually favor PR's lineup as we move a little bit later. I mean, in the late, late stages of the game, it's kind of a wash, it all comes down to initiation, but then if it does come down to initiation, you almost always want to favor the team with Tide, because they're almost always going to have double Ravage, so... Yeah, I man. think the, the key thing is this this Legion needs to get some kind of damn item, because he's Dyer's really got nothing right now. Is under yeah, attack. Refresh Orb, man. Dire We've been talking about it for a while over here, how crazy that item has become and how ridiculous it can be, especially in the hands of someone like Tide. But we're seeing it more and more often, and this hero definitely does with it true justice. Is now they're looking to break on in. They're going for the tier one, but at the same time, EG get a nice close off there. Cheshire Cat caught on the wrong side, trying to desperately cut her way through, is able to make the way out there with her calling. And now they turn back. PPD, nice echo, but not going to do quite enough damage. They focus down with, they take out the Wisp, and... They'll get it with the Reaper's Scythe. So Wisp is out for an additional 30 seconds, it looks like. But the fire back, Arteezy gets a nice double kill cleanup. Also grabs Ogre, make it a dominating streak for Universe. And EG just clean house in this bottom lane. They take out three. They want to see if they can get anyone else on the way out. Cheshire Cat, who was once caught out, did manage to make her way from the heavy pressure. But still, man, EG, solid defense on that Tier 1 tower. They just make it look easy. Radiance I mean, why does <laughs> PPD just simply doesn't Radiant need to blink this game because the fortified. enemy team's just going to walk into him. Yeah. All clumped up. That's the second time they just walked into his Echo Slam. And it just blew Radiant's up the Wisp. And it was an early BKB on Razor. I thought they were just going to kite it out and wait for it to go down, but they ravaged right in front of him and didn't really do too much. So a very sloppy fight there by PR. But nicely done this by EG. They had the core Razor. item on the BKB, or on the RTZ. Yeah, which is what they really needed to take the fights and... Radiant's did did the Reaper site connect and get attack. somebody? I, I don't think it did. I looked at the timer where I said it. I'm like, I'm probably wrong saying this, but I already started saying it. Anyways, <laughs> they are going to get a hold of J4. Very nice. Girthy static link is uh, just going to whip him down. No problem. So, Ogre, see you later. That was a quick and easy snag. Another fantastic setup, though, of course, by PPD locking him there Radiant's with the Fissure. This allows them to easily take down a Tier 2. That's back-to-back -back towers right now tower for EG. Fallen. This is going to be the biggest advancement of the game. And you can see 3K and quickly declining down towards their favor. And now they're even going to make Dyer's some damage here on the high ground. Do they know that Ravage is still down, which is a Dyer's huge part of, like I mentioned, fallen. PR's team fight. Yep. I actually think they could, go, they could get Rax here. Radiant oh, we'll okay. we'll see. Under attack. This is a, an awkward Dyer's middle tower. Yeah, it just kind of brings him here. here for 10 seconds. Yeah, they're like, oh, we'll, we'll stop him for a little bit, and then we'll... I guess Wisp will just have to go back and then TP back home. And it looks like that will be the case. But EG, they're like, we got plenty here. We did so well. We're just going to go ahead and oh. back up and take our winnings. But top lane, though, Wisp in trouble. Universe blinks in, pulls up the Sprout. Wisp tries a TP. Oh, no! Oh! That global, it will sneak you and literally bite you on the ass, especially when you think you're able to TP home. But Universe pulls it on in. He's getting nice redemption from that early game struggle. Man, oh, man. Here another TP as they go on bottom. It looks like it's going to be Ogre who takes down Zai. And now the two of them walk away with just kind of the one-for-one one trade after taking down the precious little CM support. I don't know. I feel like that was such a significant fight. EG have control of this game now. And a little more opportunity to maybe sneak in and consider starting to do a Roche.
We'll have to see if they consider going for a pickoff first and foremost and then follow up with the Roche. But for now, Universe already been putting to work that Orchid. Follows up with a Blink Dagger, so his mobility gets that much better. Yeah, Blink is really good for him, too. He's going to be able to just farm, 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 and then kind of wait until the tide empties and just fight. kind of maneuver around the team fights appropriately. Much easier when you have a Blink. So he'll probably come in and fights late. It'll be good for him. Arteza can just go balls to the wall with his BKB and 3,200 gold. Mm, Ags would be pretty damn good here, but I see a lot of different racers do a lot of different things. So. Yeah. It's really hard finally to we, Finally, we have the blink up onto this Legion, so maybe he's able to get more than 10 damage right now because this is not where you want to be. No, certainly not. EG's also not making it easy for them to get caught out. Uh, a couple times their top lane, they looked to make go on fear, but even when they found an opportunity for what they thought would have been an easy pickoff, quick rotation, quick trigger finger coming out from the rest of the EG team proves to be just too tough sometimes. They get the better out of the deal, too, so it's going to be hard. They're counting on Ditya to try to scout things out, but... EG is a team that knows they have detection out, but we're ready to go. And we saw by how they focus in these team fights. If they see the wisp, they'll go on the wisp. Other teams, you know, they might kind of second guess their own commitment issues. And someone like a wisp being stuck around in fight now. Oh, well, see, this is what I'm talking about. They have sentries ready to go. It is going to be the relocate save. Just back a couple of feet to pull Ditya out of that bind. And it looks like wisp, considering getting out of ability harassment, Ditya doesn't want to commit on anything though. Yeah, yeah, they have their own jungle really warded up. They know that their best chance for like good relocates, good pickoffs is scouting out the EG jungle. But EG are onto it, man. They got some good sentries down to kind of scout out anyone moving through. Yeah, they they were expecting a little bit more follow up right there. So nice, nice relocate out. But I think he was going to be fine nonetheless. They should have spotted our TZ walking in the jungle right here. I think PR needs to reclaim their jungle. I think that's the biggest issue. Reclaim the jungle. Try to push down this tier one tower bottom. Because actually their net worth is not too bad. Like, Clinks is pretty damn farmed. I didn't realize that. He's found the way. If he gets a PKB. He's gonna be. He's gonna be golden. I think. I think that's what he wants. I think that's what he should get. Nope, dude. I told you this kid's greedy as all hell. He's going for a Desolator. Oh, it Deso is good now. It definitely does the damage. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean yeah. Thanks to that recent patch. Thank you very much, Ice Frog. It works with searing arrows, but he's like, I just want. I just want to go fast. You know. He's like, I don't want to. I have to worry about BKB yet. I'll pick it up later. Right now, I just want to hit freaking hard, and I'm relying on Dyer's the fact that EG won't really know where I am, and with my proper positioning, I'll get off some serious, serious damage, or maybe an occasional pickoff, but it's Radiant's EG who are pressuring the bottom lane. I mean, attack. Arteezy farmed up as well on his Razor. He's looking to add pressure. He's got the reliable plate mail ready to go. He's going to build forward towards that Shivas. That is going to put uh, a bit of a hindrance towards Ditya's damage output, so... Desolator and Shivas, the, I guess they'll kind of cancel each other out as far as Arteezy is concerned. Yeah, and if this, well, if this does go, like, pretty late and both teams just start to farm and farm and farm, I'd actually favor PR just because of that item decision by Clinks, by holding on the BKB, mm -hmm. because after the change, and I think it's better to get BKB later. Like, Arteezy's is going to go up to five seconds relatively soon. Yeah. Whereas if the Clinks picks it up a little bit later, he's going to have a full duration and team fights that matter more in the later stages of the game. So, but a full Shiva is wow. RTZ is just really farmed. Certainly is still a lot of PR here hanging by the top lane, just slowly scouting out. They got Cheshire Cat lingering in the woods nearby with the blink duel ready to go. Dick is in lane, kind of baiting a little bit here. E G fear moving forward. Might get caught out. There's your blink duel. Can they do the right click? They can. There's the power of the Desolator going to work right there, but they're going to look and make a pay. Cheshire Cat will fall, but Ditya could as well. That's what I'm talking about. They think they have an easy pickoff, but EG with those quick trigger fingers, they'll move right in and they'll make you pay. And now the exchange is worse for PR, far worse. Yeah, that's where body language needed to be studied there by PR, because if you saw when they were trying to go Necro for like 25 seconds, you can see him like walking He's forward, okay. walking back, walking yep. forward, walking back. It's like, and they're right at a tower. This is just inviting the other team to come. So whereas Fear died, but they were, EG was clearly ready for that. Yep, the Universe might be in trouble. Relocate brings Wispin, and he just kind of drops some balls on Universe right there, and Universe will go down. So a nice little pick off on the side, but, you know, puts Universe back in his place. Still a lot of movement here. Mag's gonna look to flank on in. If they get a hold of Arteezy, Arteezy quickly whips the other, and they do get the Ravage off. They turn their sights on Zai, and they take down the Crystal Maiden. Now they know they can't do anything to Arteezy. Arteezy can't really do a whole lot to them. He just steps back instead. Going to walk right into an Invis. Nice little bottle for himself and head back to mid lane. So at the end of that one, it's another one for one trade, but it's just a support for a support. Yeah, nice restraint by Arteezy too to not just maybe 
a lot of players would have just kind of panicked and yeah. oh they're using spells BKB but he clearly didn't need it they were they were just completely disengaging mm -hmm. and he holds on to that nine seconds I mean it sounds kind of trivial but every second matters especially as a oh, yeah. game if they if they if they suspect that this game's gonna go mega late too like early BKB pickups like that can actually really hurt you so he wants yeah. to hold on to those those seconds yeah, you got to be prudy with the BKB early on so you have that. Prude. Time clock. Yeah, you like gotta be that. a prude, you know? This, so you can't just dish it out there at any time and spaz it after a ravage has already been used. You have to make sure you can nurse that bad boy. Be able to use it in the long road. Once more, like, sheep sticks and double ultimates, double ravages start coming out. That BKP time really does matter. So I'm 100% behind that. Fear now going to take a bit of the jungle farm. He's going straight for an Ags at this point after getting the Ghost Scepter. So not only will they be out for an extra 30 seconds, they won't be able to buy back. And that could be huge on heroes like your Clinks who might just kind of throw themselves into a side lane and go till death just so that he can buy back into a real defensive fight. So it's going to be tricky here, but looks like for EG, next up on the docket, they're already working on Roche here. He's down to a third life. This looks like it'll be an uncontested grab. Yeah, they, I think they saw too because the ward was showing them. And with their relocate talent, it just says we don't want to fight there uh, because Ravage is down. So they take a tier two top. It's not a bad trade. And like you mentioned, dirt, I keep wanting to say dirty raw, but <laughs> did you raw? Dirty raw. Amura, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. Amura, that's a Han hero, man. Yeah, I know. Just saying, I. Do you? I know. I used to play Han. Okay. That hero was broke as shit, though. I'll tell you what. Especially when he first came out. Man, oh man, it was yeah, ridiculous. He was. No I mean, that's, the, that's the story of like every hero in every game, though, right? Like, yeah. You remember Legion when he first came out? Oh, or yeah. she? I keep calling him her a she. It's okay, dude. You just it's must have something we don't. It's all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those eyes, man. Those eyes are not the eyes of a friendly woman. I know that. So, something's going on. <laughs> something is going on down there. A lot of testosterone. Anyway, she's moving the up to the top lane. Yeah. <laughs> Serious goth stage happening right now. But Ditya might be scouted out here. They don't have follow up vision. And she's already walked out of the uh, sentry ward and steps right back into lane. But bottom, Mag just kind of. Hey, Fear, how you doing? Uh, I can't really oh, do much Oh, they have relocate either. up in four seconds. They have Ooh. relocate up in four Ooh. seconds. So he's going to hunt him down here. He gets one anchor smash off. He's going to follow him home. He's got the Ravage, and there's that relocate. So Fear might be in trouble here. Can they dish off quick damage? They're actually going to bring in Legion Commander. That sets up a duel. Can they bring down Fear in time? No. Oh, looks like it was pretty close, but they do get it. So another bit of bonus damage right there. Fear kind of out in his own, doing a bit of a side push. Not, not very often you're going to see EG do though. something like that. But yeah, he does buy out, so saves a lot of money, and his Axe is complete. He did go for Ghost Scepter, which is really good against Clinks. You m almost wonder if uh, someone needs to get a Purge or Clinks himself, but I, I don't actually know how. Maybe you know. I should know this, but Purge working with uh, with Deso, like how does it override? How does it? Does it do you know? Legion Commanders or oh, just Purge no, in like general? Clinks, oh, clinks on top of each other. Tank. Yeah, so like, would it take away the armor reduction and use the mana burn, or would it? I, I, I don't. Think I don't know how it works, dude. I mean, I'm thinking the mana I should is know still this. legit. But yeah, you're the player, dude. Don't put this on. Me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay, man. The chat will tell us they'll be friendly. They're like, oh, kind casters, silly <laughs> bananas. Didn't you forget that it's this? No, they're going to call us retards, Trout, and think that we're noobs and oh, scrubs. Kind casters. Yeah, but it's okay. You guys can lay I'll it into us. I'll give you a pass this time, but in the future. <laughs> I still love you, anyways, you silly <laughs> fool, for not knowing that, and you just are supposed to cast Dota all day. Oh, well. But. I'm sure we'll find out the information which is what's important because this is a new thing for Clinks, you know, being able to even use these kind of items. And I, to be honest with you, I've never seen a Desolator and Diffusal stacked on top of each other. But that Purge could certainly help a little bit. I have a feeling, though, he'll probably just go for Crit if he doesn't need to get an MKB. Uh, we'll have to see how much longer he wants to wait before getting any sort of BKB. But I don't know, man. Kid's crazy. Top lane, he's already split pushing. He's just always looking for other objectives while EG thinks they have a nice formidable push or siege happening. He's there. He's causing mischief on the side, you know? Yeah, Blink would be really good for him, too, if the old envy build on Clinks. I don't even know if he was the first one to do it, but it would be effective here. They have ages now for... Did you see how much longer? Oh, oh. Well, you know what? Let me up. just kind of tell Ice Frog to pop that up there for you. There it is. Just okay, under two you, minutes. No problem. I have that connection, by the way. Send so. him my regards. Uh, I don't know if he'll like that, attack. but... <laughs> <laughs> are Talk to the guy in my life. Anyways, breaking the high ground. They're going to add a little bit of extra damage here. The glyph's already done, so so is this tier 3. But the mischief is happening Radiance right now, Trough. Look what's happening top. Yeah, your racks are under siege Dyer's right now from a certain Dit Yara. And we are going to have to force a couple of TPs back. Dyer's it looks like from the side of EG, they get their tier 3, but they might lose racks here. They quickly burst down the wisp, and they do lose Dyer's one racks. Dit now 
Might be able to sneak out of here alive after the sprout does conclude, and he will. So, a, a tit for a tat, bottom lane it continues. It's Arteezy now going on Onslaught into Mag, who's trying to slow them down from TPing in. But with Arteezy still has a TP, Zai doesn't have room for one regardless, but now they can finish what they started here on bottom lane. Universe comes in, pulls out the Treons, and now they're gonna force out a buyback from Mag, jumping on through Zai, big ultimate, huge damage coming out from Zai. My goodness, the boy can make it rain. Brings down some serious pain and clears on out. Mag is back, but it's going to be a dieback if he goes down. Ditya as well. He's right into the fray already. And if he gets caught out, he's done for a long time. And they lose both of their racks. So EG. Oh, it's cute. Cute little side push you got there. You got our racks. That's neat. We'll re-engage and we'll take both of them down. EG, man. Holy they look good. Shit, that CM ult. That CM ult did so much. He got like the perfect procs on that. That was insane. I mean, what's going to stop him? I guess he saw that the Fire Blast might have been down or not available. Yeah, and outside yeah. of a Ravage being on cooldown, he's like, it's my time, baby. Jumped in, just kind of put on a show for all of us and really took it home. EG now taking this all the way back. It looked like PR were creeping back into the net worth lead for just a moment. But EG, a team well-versed, well-experienced. They're taking it right to PR now, and they're putting their attention on this tier two mid. And the interesting thing about it is, that, like you mentioned perfectly, like he knew that there were no stuns, so you have to either focus him or ignore him. But the damage was so great, you want to focus him. But he's very tanky, so the time it would take you to actually kill him would be longer than the duration of the ult itself. So you don't, you can't, you actually doesn't do anything to target him. So if he gets a lucky proc on his ulti there, it's really devastating. Nicely played there by Zai. Very, very nice. By the way, I did get the report. Um, they do not stack. Only the first one applies as far as Diffusal and Desolator is concerned. Of course, that person could be wrong. I'm just reading well, off the first so that, that just means popped out. That just means that he gets the Deso, right? Like, he'll get the negative. Ch chat? Let me know. Because if, if, so, if so, that's fine. I don't think the yeah. mana burn is why you would buy the item. Just for the purge. It's just for the purge, yeah. right. And of course, you get the extra bonus of stats. But, yeah, I think the first item. So the Desolator would go through in that case. And... Wouldn't be hurt, hurtful too much, but he is indeed going to go for the crit. MKB not necessary in this kind of setup, so he's going to go for more raw right-click output. And the boys' greed, it's, it's paid off before. This time, though, against a squad like EG, they, they love to go into a brawl. I mean, they'll throw off their gloves in exchange and kind of swing for the fences here. Did, did Zai just use his ultimate in top yeah, lane? Yeah, it was a misclick. Whoops, Zai. I saw that one. See, you got to own your misclicks. Like, he didn't even hold it. Yeah, just, just like, let like it free. The, yeah. He tried to when think that I wouldn't see it. I saw like the it. The PGG black holes where like you where you fuck yeah. up. You just need to just keep doing just it. Just like, do it. Oh. Take your hands off the keyboard. Throw them in the air. Yep. God, why? Now we got to wait another hundred some odd seconds, two minutes or whatever, till I got that ultimate again. But obviously, in the middle of a creep wave, maybe he didn't want to show PR that he already used it. But I don't think PR are looking to fight that soon. They're still looking to farm him up much further. Did you? Just scavenging through his own jungle as far as what scraps are left behind. Wisp has got a gem and a ghost scepter for now, but. Still is the easy focal point from the EG team on being able to burst him down. Without a whole lot of lockdown coming out from PR, at least not feeling comfortable with making lockdown in the middle of a big fight, aside from Ravage. I don't know, man. EG just have so much durability, I think they're going to be able to persist on through this one. And it looks like Fear has a Blink Dagger of his own on, on his Necrophos. Man. Oh, I like that. I really like that. This is what I talked about at the beginning. Blink Gags. And he went for it. I think it's really, really good. So saving for a buyback is kind of, I wouldn't say futile, but not very effective anymore. Because <laughs> uh, it doesn't do anything for you. Sure, That's, sure, Kat. Yeah, that was really close. He's going to need some help. Relocate in. It puts him right into a duel, but Artiz already popped that BKB. They return fire very nicely with that Reaper Scythe. Echo Slam follow up. They got two down. Both those cores. Whisk goes into a corner and says, please, God. And, well, he dies as well. So that quickly is three dropped on the side of PR and EG could just derp their way down this top lane and go for an easy tier two, possibly break into the high ground here because Ditya is out for over a minute with no buyback. He's out cold. Yeah, he is out cold. That, that duel did absolutely nothing. He purged himself for two seconds and then he Radiant's couldn't even attack because the Shiva is so just so good. Great Not setup good. right there. Have just... you seen Rocky IV? Of course I've seen Rocky IV. What, what's the black Radiant's guy's name? Apollo Creed. Yeah, he is Apollo Creed. Dude, Apollo Creed wasn't in Rocky IV. Or he, he was in the yeah, very, very beginning. That's yeah, right. He died. He died, oh, that's right. Spoiler. 
Oh, sorry, everyone. If you haven't seen Rocky it's Four, it's only been out for like what 70 years. It feels like. Anyways, looking to break the high ground. EG press on in. They got the eye of the storm out and at the ready. And now that the glyph falls, the tower takes damage. That's how it works in Dota, boys and girls. Now they're gonna go ahead, bring it down to about third life. Very timid play. PR know this could be their last defense, and they don't even have their clinks at the ready. EGs know this as well. They have great positioning. PPD with his blink dagger at the go on the outside, ready to slow any roll with the fissure. And it looks like EG are going to play it a little bit safe here. They know Dick is about to be back. They take their tier three. They walk back. And I imagine they could wait it out for Roche, which is about to be popping up here momentarily. Now, EG is just outplaying PR at this game. I, yeah. I actually really like PR's draft. I think it's a really nice draft. I think the Klink's pick was good. I think he slowly got outplayed in mid as far as early CS goes. Uh, whatever RTZ did, just being able to CS just a little bit better. Like, I think he specifically bought boots to get away from the static Link, and with the extra damage from Searing Arrows, he could have done a little bit better, but I think it all phases the game pretty much, except for the early rotations from Universe. He was 0 3 and 0 at the start. Uh oh, immediate jump in, Force Blink. Universe gets taken down immediately from the hands of Mag. Now they open up a nice duel here on Zai, who already had popped the BKB. So she is still in the mix, but they're able to quickly take down Ditya again, Ogre again. And now on the walk back, Tishar Cat. No, that TP's not going to work. They just quickly slam it home. And man, oh man, Arteezy just cleans house. That was just fast, furious, and now Wisp comes back to his inevitable doom. Just the whip holds him in place. It's disgusting. Leaves Mag all by alone to defend, and he already lost Rax to the top lane. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Wrap it up. Well, they killed the universe a second time. I'm sure Mag Mag had a fantastic score, though. Look at that. 5 1 and 5. The, he's a stand in, right? Evil yeah. Geniuses. Mag was the stand in for today. He, he repped it here for his Tidehunter, brought in a very nice TP. Oh, great. Anyways. That was just our game number one. This is a two-game series, of course. This first game was on the U.S. East server, so you can always say, oh, PR, they had a little bit of extra ping. But regardless, bah. even though throwing down a pretty nice draft, it's very clear that EG just pulled out proper execution. They had such quick reaction. You know, with They were right there with it with the TPs. On any sort of engagement, PR thought they could get a nice quick pickoff. They made them pay so hard. They took two for the one or three for the one at times. And... EG, man, they look damn good. So with that said, we'll kind of quickly hop into game number two here. We're going to be on the Luxembourg server now. And uh, if you liked what you heard, you can catch me over on my Twitter at Guy. Joining me, the handsome, illustrious uh, Trauf. Catch him on his Twitter, at Trauf Dota. That's correct, right? Yes, thank you. Oh, no problem, man. So go show him your love, show him your support. We'll be right back in a moment for game number two here. This is Dota Pit, and we are in the group stages. Be back in just a moment.